I don't plan to retire. I want to die in the classroom. What I want to do is fall dead. That's the only thing today's students would remember. <laughs> I'm George K. Schweitzer. I'm an uh, alumni distinguished professor of chemistry uh, here at the uh, at Knoxville campus of the University of Tennessee. And uh, if, if I live a little longer and make it until May, it will be 75 years uh, that I have been uh, in service here at the university. Nearly 75 years of being here um, and all the topics he's covered and everything that he's done. I know uh, he he's quite tight-lipped sometimes about what he wants to say and tell people, but he has done a breadth of things. Well, I'm a chemist and my specialties are uh, inorganic chemistry and radiochemistry. And I teach courses in those areas uh, and I conduct research in, in those areas. If you happen to have a, uh, a medical scan, photoelectron scan, one of the instruments that you put in it, that put, they put you in to make the scan, I have been active in the development of that. In my early years, when we were uh, in the Cold War with Russia, I was the Tennessee State Radiation Officer. He was a prodigy as a, as a kid, so it was always funny to hear some of the stories that he told then using chemistry. During World War II, I was active in the investigation of a, an element uh, very close to uranium. After the war, I went to graduate school and I finished my, I finished my PhD uh, at the University of Illinois. His uh, doctoral work that he did back in the 40s uh, was an extension of the Manhattan Project. When I graduated in 47, I looked for jobs. And there were plenty of jobs because the veterans were coming back from the war and all schools were expanding at a very rapid pace. The offer from Tennessee was extremely attractive because we were 20 miles from Oak Ridge, and Oak Ridge is radiochemistry all over itself. The chemistry department here at the university at that time was expanding, and I was brought in to establish uh, the graduate programs in inorganic chemistry and radiochemistry. And we taught it in two big places, here and Oak Ridge, because the Oak Ridge was full of people who had delayed their education to work on the atom bomb project, and they were stacked up ready to go back to school. In coming to the University of Tennessee, they had to release portions of his redacted uh, dissertation, so the faculty that was here at that time could see that he actually did this work and that it was uh, worthy of a PhD and that he was to be considered as a candidate. Well, the first day on my job uh, is a real hoot. When I was 23, it was in the summer of 1948 when I came to my first class, I was astonished. There were about 30 people in the class and I believe to my soul they were all older than I was. I was the youngest among them. So I just sat down in the front row uh, until class time and I listened to them. And they made such statements as the following. Well, here we got a new professor. Uh, and one of them said, yeah, those new guys, those new PhDs think they know everything. And, and uh, we need to look out for him because he's going to pull that on us probably, and and we, uh, have, and that's that's absolutely uh, ridiculous, and and he's not going to put anything by us. And the bell rang, and I stood up and I said, 
gentlemen, I'm your professor. No. <laughs> And it it was a wild time. It was a, a little while before the laughter stopped. <laughs> so I had a very good time on on the first day of my job here at Tennessee. Well, what keeps me going, my my love of investigation and, and my insatiable desire to learn and to know things and to discover new things and to have the joy of communicating them to students and involving them in the work. It's just as rewarding as you can imagine. It's kind of refreshing um, <laughs> to, to be able to talk to him still uh, and, and, and have like just this wealth of knowledge at my fingertips essentially to if I ask him the right questions worded in the right way. Um, He'll, it'll just open up a whole wealth of knowledge. Well, I'm most proud of, uh, number one, my um, research, because uh, after World War II, uh, research just exploded in this country. I had the opportunity to, to pioneer, to be one of the few people as this whole research area uh, expanded. The book that he wrote with one of his graduate students of uh, the aqueous chemistry of the elements. This book, this is my copy all marked up, um, but it covers literally the whole periodic table except for the super heavy elements. You can look up the references of it. I think it's got um, at least of people who have used it in their own research. We see about 400 different references to it, individual references, not repeats. Um, so that's. 400 people who have reported that it's used, um, probably more so that have it on their shelf and have looked at it and, and used it as kind of a background or jumping off point. Have you thought about retiring? Yes, once. <laughs> and, and, and I've overcome that. <laughs> they offer us now what you and I might call a partial retirement. Uh, and uh, that's what I intend to do. Uh, when my 75 years are up, I intend to drop back to part time because this is my home. Just his impact. Um, we have met uh, students that are the grandkids of students of his. Um, and that in and of itself kind of encapsulates the impact that he's had, that he's taught these people or he's uh, mentored them in some way. And then they've gone out and been able to uh, take that knowledge they've learned and employed in the world not to mention all the papers that he's published, books that he's uh, published as well. He's given talks at universities. It's just hard to really summarize what he's done. You ask me if I enjoy the work and here I am. I, I, I wouldn't be here after uh, 74 and a half years if, <laughs> if I didn't like it. I don't like it, I love it. <laughs>